Guys, welcome back to math. Today we are not just going to do lesson 28. We're actually going to do a mix of 28 and 29. We're going to combine the lessons just like we did with 22 and 23. So we're going to watch a little bit of Miss Singleton. We're going to watch a little bit of Miss Curry and we're going to put them together. Okay, so that means that you're going to have two problems today. Don't hate me. Okay, they're short. We'll work on it. So let's get started today. Let's look and see what we're going to be doing. I can solve math stories with math drawings, true number sentences, and statements, crossing off what is taken away. Okay, so now it's tricky because we're gonna be talking about crossing off when we take away. We're also going to talk about subtraction within a whole. So we break it into two parts. We're not taking anything away, but we're gonna break things into two parts, okay? So we're gonna look at subtraction two different ways today. Crossing out because it's taken away and then breaking it apart into two parts, okay? So let's get started. Um, I'm a pen. You don't have fluency today, I don't believe. Let me double check here. A lot of them. Sorry, guys. All right. Well, goodness. I went too far. Okay. You may have fluency. You may not. Let's look. Uh, just look in Google Classroom to see. I'm not sure if you do or not. I can't remember. They're all running together right now. So double check. Make sure if you do, go ahead and do it. You'll set your timer for two minutes and do it. If not, don't worry about it. Okay. So. Let's uh, let's get our brains working. Let's do a little detective work. Detective Ray in the house. All right, let's read. Remember, we read through everything to see what we need to do to solve the case. Then we go back and look for clues to help us solve that case. All right, so here we go. Eight ducks are swimming in the pond. Four ducks fly away. How many ducks are still swimming in the pond? Write a number bond, number sentence, and statement. Draw a number path to prove your answer. Now, let's look and see what it's asking us to do. We have to write a number bond, a number sentence, and a statement. Then it tells us we have to draw a number path to prove our answer. Okay, so that's four different things. One, two, three, four. We have to do number bond, number sentence, statement, and a number path. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw my number bond. I'm gonna go ahead and draw my number sentence. Now, look, I left it blank because I don't know if we're doing addition or subtraction yet. Okay, so we can't do anything just yet. Can't write a statement because I need to write it out in words. So I'm not ready to do that yet. And then it says draw a number path. What's a number path? Hmm, it's a number line. Okay, if you know it as a number line or a number path, it's just a string of lines. So let's, before we draw out our number path, let's look and see what our numbers are to see where we need to go with our number path. All right, eight ducks are swimming in the pool, in the pond. What is our clue? We have eight ducks, okay? So, four fly away. We have a clue there. Yep, okay, four fly away. Are we going to add or subtract? Hmm, if I have eight ducks swimming and four fly away, I'm going to subtract. So I can put my subtractions on there, okay? Now, I know eight is my total. I'm gonna go ahead and put eight here. If I know it's a total here, I can put my total here. Okay, now, money. Oh, but wait, Miss Ray. Hmm, that's not right. Why is that not right? Because when we're subtracting, we don't put our total here. We put our total here. Remember, our biggest number goes first. So if we're adding and our total is eight, then we're subtracting our eight's gonna go here, okay? Careful, it's tricky. See how easy it was to mess up? 
Bree just did it. Be careful. All right. How many ducks flew away? Four. Do we know how many left? Not yet. We can take that four and subtract it four. Okay, we're still looking for mystery. Now, I'm going to do something to help me out. I'm going to draw eight. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Okay, now eight ducks are swimming. We said four of them flew away. One, two, three, four. I'm crossing them out today because they flew away. They're no longer here, okay? So I'm crossing them out to show that they went away. We don't have them anymore. So how many ducks are left in my pond? Let's look. One, two, three, four. Hmm. Wait a minute. Four and four, that's one of our doubles. Does four and four make eight? Yes, it does. So then if we say eight, take away four equals four. Now, are we done? Did we solve this case? Let's check. Did we make a number bond? I got my number bond. Did we make a number sentence? I got my number sentence. Did we make a statement to answer our question? Not yet, let's do that. What was our question? How many ducks are still swimming in the pond? Four ducks are still swimming in the pond. Okay, there's my statement. Did we draw a number path to prove our answer? Ooh, we didn't. We drew a picture, but we didn't do a path. So let's do a number path real quick, okay? Hold on. I'm so sorry, friends. Let's try this again. Now we're gonna make our number path, okay? Now it says we have eight ducks. Let's make a line. We're gonna start on one end, put zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna go ahead and go to 10. Nine and 10. Okay, now I'm gonna start with eight because I had eight ducks to begin with. Four of them flew away. When we are subtracting on a number path, you have to go back toward the beginning, okay? If you're adding, you're gonna go that way, but if you're subtracting, you're gonna come back, okay? So let's jump four times, starting at the eight. One, two, three, four. How many did I land on? Four. I have jumped one, two, three, four times. Four and four make eight, or eight minus four make four. Now, did we make our number path? Yes, we did. Do we know how many ducks are still swimming in the pond? We know that four ducks are still swimming in the pond. So that means, case closed, solved the problem. All right, I'm gonna get us ready for our video. Remember, we're gonna watch parts of two video. We're not gonna do the whole video. We're gonna watch parts of both videos, okay? So I'm gonna pause to get that ready. It's a little tedious to do. And you are going to get your whiteboard ready. Make sure it's nice and clean. And I'll see you in just a second. Okay, guys, now this is where it gets a little tricky because like I said, we're combining two lessons today. So I'm gonna show you part of one video and then I'm gonna show you part of another video. But I'm also going to be talking to you about both of these, okay? So we are going to really have to pay attention, make sure your listening ears are on and you're watching and that you have no distractions around you because this is, this is going to be a little different, okay? So let's get started. We're going to start with Miss Kerr. No, we're going to start with Miss Singleton. We're going to start with Miss Singleton today. So let's share this screen. Can't keep them straight. There's too many different teachers. All right, let me make her bigger. 
All right, so let's look. And with Miss Singleton, we're actually gonna talk about when you take away. So we'll have our total and we're gonna take some away. Okay, so we're gonna talk with her about that. So let's watch. Hello and welcome. Today we will be solving math stories using horizontal marks to cross off what is taken away. Welcome to another edition of Math Stories Theater. You will be watching math stories and have a hand at solving them. Ready, set? You, you bet. bet. Let's get started. There were six children at the sleepover. Two children got picked up. How many children stayed? I'm counting four. Four. Put that into a sentence. Okay, so let's do that. Let's put that into a sentence. We had six children at a sleepover. So let's write six. Two of them went home. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see a little better. Okay, so I'm gonna subtract two. How many were left at my sleepover? Four. Okay, let's see if we wrote that right. Four. Uh-oh, what happened to our video? Hmm, hold on guys, it's buffering. It's buffering. In the middle of it. In the middle. <laughs> Is it recording now? Yep, it's still, re we're still recording. Hold on guys, I'm gonna stop for a second. I'm gonna pause. Okay guys, let's try this again. I think it's working, hopefully. Stayed. Now use simple math drawings to show how you know four children stayed. Pause the video if you need to and play when you're ready. All right, so let's draw to match our picture, okay? So I'm gonna draw my six. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six children at the party. Now, I'm not gonna draw my two because I'm subtracting, I'm taking away. And we know that two of those children did not stay. So we're gonna mark out two, okay? Now, let me zoom in so you can see a little bit easier here. Now I've got my two marked out and I have one, two, three, four left over. Let's see if we have the same. Okay, share your work. Great work. What did you start with? We started with our six. Six children at the sleepover. What is the hole in the story? Our hole is six. Six. So our drawing shows how we started with the hole. Then what happened? Two of them left. So we marked out our two. Two children had to leave. When they were leaving, I drew a line across them to show they were leaving. Let's show that with our drawing. I'm going to cross two off with a line. You try tracing that in the air. Let's do it, ready? Just straight across. What does that line crossing out those two remind you of? Hmm, kind of reminds me of the subtraction sign. Yes, take it away, the subtraction symbol. Good, write a number and a number sentence that tells the sleepover story. Okay, so let's pause. pause if you need to and press play when you're ready. Let's pause so we can make our number bond because we already have our sentence and we also have the picture. So let's make a number bond now, okay? So. Now, remember, what was my hole? My hole was the six because I had six kids at the sleepover. So I'm gonna put six in or my total, okay? Then how many did we have leave? 
We had two that left. That's a part. And how many more did I have? I had four left over. Four still stayed for the party. Let's see if we're right. Share what you did with me. I love seeing your work. Ta-da! Did you write your number sentence as six minus two equals four? And for your number bond, you had six as the total amount of children at the sleeper. One part as two, which represented the children that were picked up, and the other part as four, which represented the children that stayed. Good job. All right, are you ready for another math story? We're gonna do one more math story with Miss Curry, and then we're gonna go over to Miss Singleton and see what she's talking about, okay? In math stories theater. Make sure you raise your board. I know I am. There were seven cupcakes left on the shelf. Three of the cupcakes were sold. How many cupcakes were not sold? Okay, so let's look at that. We had seven cupcakes on our shelf. Three of them got sold. How many did we have left over that were not sold? Take a minute and count if you need to. All right, let's count them. One, two, three, four. Four of them were not sold. Now, I didn't count these because we crossed those out. Those are our ones that we got rid of, okay? So I want you to go ahead while Ms. Singleton is talking and write out seven minus the three equals how many were left over, okay? Four. Put that into a sentence. Four cupcakes were not sold. Now use simple math drawings to show how you know four cupcakes were not sold. All right, press pause if you need to and press play when you're ready to return. I am gonna pause it because I'm gonna draw my seven. Let's draw my seven, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have our seven. Now, am I gonna draw three? No, because that's how many I'm taking away from seven. So I'm going to cross out three, ready? One, two, three, I crossed out three. How many did I have left? One, two, three, four. I had four left. Okay, let's see if we're right. Share your work. Good job. I like that drawing. So what did we start with? We started with seven. Seven cupcakes on a shelf. What is the hole in this story? Seven is my hole. Seven? So your drawing shows how we started with the hole and then what happened? We took three away. There's my three I took away. Remember, I three drew that line. Three cupcakes were sold. Let's show the three cupcakes that were sold with our drawing. I'm going to cross three out with a line. Now, write a number bond and number sentence that tells the cupcake story. Don't forget to label your number bond. Okay, so we already wrote out our number sentence because that was the first thing I had you do. Then we drew our picture. So let's go back and do our number bond. Now, what was my total? We just talked about that. My total or my whole was seven because I started out with seven cupcakes. And I'm gonna put total, okay? Then three were sold. Three goes here. We're gonna put sold. How many were left? Count them again, one, two, three, four. Four were left, I'm gonna put left. All right, let's see if our number bond matches up with her number bond. Press pause if you need additional time. Good job. 
If you said you wrote seven minus three equals four as your number, and in your number bomb, you had seven as the total amount of cupcakes that were on the shelf. One part is three because that was the amount was sold. And the other part is four because those were the cupcakes left on the shelf. If so, you did a great job. Okay, now we're gonna stop here because now we're going to go into the video with Miss Curry. So I'm gonna pause just a second so I can get our video up for Miss Curry. And what I want you to do right now is I want you to make sure that your whiteboard is cleared off and ready to go. Because now we know how to take away numbers when we subtract. We're gonna look now to see how we can subtract using parts, okay? So give me just a second here. I'm gonna stop sharing just for a second. I'm gonna pause. Okay guys, now I'm ready to go. So now we're gonna switch gears and we're gonna talk to Miss Curry now, okay? And just a minute ago with Miss Singleton, we took away, we marked out because we took away, but this time we're gonna look at different parts, okay? So when you subtract, you can have parts. So let's watch and see. Let me share this out with you guys. Here we go. Um, remember, uh -oh. think about hold on. I gotta rewind the video. Oh, there we go. Now we're ready. Welcome students. My name is Mrs. Curry. Today we're going to be solving take apart subtraction problems. These are slightly different than what you've been doing recently where you were taking from a total and part went away. So I want you to be thinking as we move through this lesson how we're taking total and just breaking it into two parts. Let's get started. Today we're going to do another edition of Math Stories Theater. Six children go to the zoo. Four of the children are wearing black shoes. The rest are wearing white shoes. How many children are wearing white shoes at the zoo? Hmm, count them if you need to. I see two. Let me organize my students by shoe color so it's easier for us to see the two parts. On your whiteboard, draw a simple math drawing to show all six students. Okay, I'm gonna pause it. Let's draw our six. Remember when we draw, we draw little circles, draw it straight in a line, just like we did the last time. Draw our six students. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's my six. You know what? I'm going to put six up here. You should have six circles drawn in a straight line where each circle represents one student. We know that four students are wearing black shoes. That's one of our parts. So let's circle four circles. One, That's kind of two, funny. I said three, circle four. four circles. There they are. On your whiteboard, let's write a subtraction sentence to match the drawing. Okay. So now we know that the total is six students. So we'll start with six. Then subtract the part that we know already, which is the four students who are wearing black shoes. We need to figure out now when we take away four students from the six students, how many will be left wearing white shoes. So how many did we not circle? That's right. Two. Our missing part is two. And that represents the two students who are wearing white shoes. Way to go. Let's try another one. Okay, before we move on, let's look at how this is different from what we just did, okay? Because the last we did, we had and then we marked out four like this. How is this different? So in this one, nobody left. They just had something different. Where in this one, we crossed it out because they left, they went away. So we're not doing this because nobody's leaving. They just have something different, okay? So be very careful. With this one, you're going to 
crossed out because they're gone or it's gone and we're not doing that in this what we are doing is we're showing that there's two different things so we're going to either circle or you could even color those four in okay all right let's try another one and see if we can understand this a little bit i'm going to go ahead and erase the students want to go visit some animal exhibits while they're at the zoo three of the children want to see zebras want to go see the monkeys. How many children want to go see the monkeys? Turn and decide with a partner, or you can say it out loud to me. How many want to go see the monkeys? Three. Let's organize the students so we can see our two parts better. The students on the left want to see the zebras. That means that the students on the right want to go see the monkeys. On your whiteboard, Let's draw a simple math drawing to match the situation. Let's do it together. All right, so let's draw our six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We draw a simple math drawing of six circles in a straight row to represent all six of our students at the zoo. We know that three of them want to go see the zebra. So let's circle three of the circles to represent one part. Did you circle three? This helps us see our other part, the number of children left who want to go see the monkeys. How many circles are left? Counting three. Let's write a number sentence to match the situation. Write yours on your whiteboard and then we'll compare. Okay, remember, you're gonna start with your whole. So we had six, three want to go see the zebras, and that leaves three that want to go see the monkey. Okay, let's show each other our number sentences. Ready? Three, two, one, show me. We got it right. Did you get six minus three equals three? Way to go. Let's do some more number sentences. There are eight cupcakes in all. So all right, hold on. Let's pause for a second, erase your board. And she just eight cupcakes in all. So let's go ahead and draw our eight circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I'm gonna put eight up here. All right, now let's listen to the rest of the story. Six with chocolate frosting Ooh. and the rest with vanilla. Mm -hmm. How many cupcakes have vanilla frosting? I'm going to say it again, one piece of information at a time. There are eight cupcakes in all. Draw something. Yep, we sure did, didn't we? We drew eight Yes, I can draw eight cupcakes all in a row. Now, am I going to take the time to draw out eight cupcakes? No, because I'm a mathematician and I know that there's a more efficient way. I'm going to draw eight circles all in a row to represent those eight cupcakes. Now, is eight a part or the total? Mm, that's my it total. It is the total. Draw with me now. There are six cupcakes with chocolate frosting. Ooh. Should I add on six more? No, I'm not adding six cupcakes to my eight cupcakes. We already said that's the total. I know that six out of my eight cupcakes have chocolate frosting. Should I cross out or get rid of six cupcakes? Nope. We didn't eat them. Because I'm not getting rid of them. I'm not eating them. Oh my goodness, can you imagine eating six cupcakes? That'd give me a tummy ache. No. I'm going to circle six cupcakes to show that this is the part of the total that has split icing or chocolate frosting. One, two, three, four, five, six. The rest of the cupcakes have vanilla frosting. So how many cupcakes are left? See two, let's count them. Two cupcakes One, two. have vanilla frosting. On your whiteboard, write a subtraction sentence to represent 
story. Now, if you were doing like I did, I wrote my eight when I drew my eight. I wrote my six when I circled my six, and then we wrote our two when we noticed there were two left over. So don't confuse. This should be a subtraction. So your subtraction sentence this should be equal. Eight minus six equals two. Eight minus six equals two. Two cupcakes have vanilla frosting. Hey, you're getting pretty good at this. Let's try another. Okay, erase your board. Listen to my story. There are nine balls all together. Three of them are basketballs and the rest are soccer balls. How many of the balls are soccer balls? I'm going to give you a moment to think about what you'll draw. So I'm gonna pause. So let's talk about this. So she had nine balls. Three of them were basketballs or soccer balls. I can't remember which one she said. But we have three that are either a soccer ball or a basketball. So what are we going to draw first? We're going to draw the nine because my nine is my total. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now I'm going to go ahead and write nine up there because I know that I have a total of nine balls. So there's my nine. Let's start with the first piece of information. There are nine balls all together. Can we draw something? Mm -hmm. We're doing that. Oop, I erased part yes. of Yes, let's draw nine circles in a row. Now I always like to go back and count my circles again just to make sure I didn't miscount. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Excellent. Is nine a part or the total? It's our total. Because that's it's how many all together. The next thing we know is that three of these balls are basketballs. Oh, that's wrong. So basketball. what should we do now to our drawing? I'm gonna circle three that I know. There's three. I can also say minus three. Yes, more let's circle the part that is basketballs. We know that three of the balls are basketballs. Circle three circles. I said it again, I said circle three circles. That's funny. We know the rest are soccer balls. So I know that three and six more equals nine, so there must be six soccer balls. One, two, three, but four, five, Just to be six. sure, I can also count this part. One, two, three, four, five, six. I was right. Three and six make nine all together. On your whiteboard, write a subtraction sentence to show how we use the total nine and one part three to find the missing part. Push pause now and then we'll compare our subtraction sentences. If you wrote it the same time I did, you would have wrote your none when we did the whole. Sentences. And we wrote minus three when we Let's circled. Let's show on three, two, one. Show me. Did you write nine minus three equals six? Fantastic. Did you notice today that we didn't cross anything off when we subtracted? Mm, Why but you we think did. That is? So let's talk about that because we did. So I'm going to stop sharing this now. We, ooh, I'm really close to you guys now. We did at the beginning of our lesson cross out because we were taking something away or somebody was leaving the area. So when you are taking away or it's leaving, you're going to cross it out, okay? Because that shows us that it's no longer there. But we also did problems that we had two parts for. We had a total of something, but they were two different things. Okay, so we showed that by circling. Like I said, you could also just color it in and show that it's different. So now I have three black circles and six white circles. Okay, there's nothing gone, so we didn't cross it out. We just showed that it was different. So today in your problem set, you're gonna have two problem sets to do. You are going to do 28 and 29, but for 28, you're only going to do numbers one through four, 
and 29 you're only going to do one through three okay so let's look at 28 first and then we'll look at 29. so let me get my board on all right let me this up a little bit so you can see a little better there we go all right and like any good math detective we have to read the directions so we know how to solve our mysteries so let's read our directions first before we can look for clues read the story draw a horizontal line through the items that are leaving the story okay horizontal just means straight across then complete the number bond sentence and statement okay that's three things that we have to do other than cross off so that's really four things you have to cross off the ones that are leaving you have to complete a number bond you have to write a number sentence and finish the statement okay so let's look at number one there are five toy airplanes flying at the park one went down and broke. How many airplanes are still flying? Okay, so let's look at this. Remember, we have to cross out how many are leaving. So one went down and broke. So we're going to take that one and we're going to cross it out. Now, let's look. Can I complete my number bond now? My total was five one left how many are still flying let's count one two three four five minus one equals four there are blank airplanes still flying how many did we say four now, did we solve everything? Did we cross out what was leaving? Yes. Did we fill in our number bond? Yes. Did we write a number sentence? Yes. Did you fill in a statement? Yes. Once you finish all that, then you can move on to the next one, okay? Remember, you are on this one, you are doing one through four, one, two, three, and four. So let me pause, I'm gonna get the next set up here so we can look at that one to see what you're going to do on that one and then we'll wrap it up okay now let's look at the problem set for 29. again we got to read the directions to find out what we need to do complete the story and solve label the number bond color the missing part in the number sentence and the number bond now i don't want you to color i just want you to circle okay so let's read our story there are blank apples blank have worms yuck how many good apples are there so let's come over here and look how many apples do we have let's count them one two three four five six i have six apples there are six apples blank have worms how many have worms let's go back and look one two three how many had worms three have worms yuck how many good apples are there so we know that there are six apples total three of them have worms how many didn't have worms here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna circle the part that had worms so how many did not have worms three now i can fill in my number sentence six minus the three that had worms equals three good apples there are three good apples okay that's what i want you to do on problem set for 29. you're going to do one two and three make sure you're filling in the story fill in your number bond circling your part and then filling in the rest okay your number sentence and your statement you're going to do for problem set 28 1 2 3 and 4 and then 1 2 and 3 on the problem set 29 okay do not do your exit ticket today because i don't think i put it on there anyway but we are not going to do the exit ticket since you're combining two different lessons today okay so if you have any questions please feel free to email me 
I will try to get back to you guys as soon as I possibly can. All right? So I will see you guys on the next lesson, which will be 31. We're going to jump around a lot, so it's going to be a little crazy. So I'll see you guys on the next lesson.